Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to check out the solo stamina sorcerer PV build for the Greymore chapter. This is by far one of my favorite solo setups because Sorks just have so much power. Timestamps in the description below and if you're looking for a written guide it's on alcashq.com. I will also put the link in the description. With this setup you will be able to solo overland, public dungeons, world bosses, even four men, normal or veteran dungeons if you're experienced enough. Like this setup can do everything pretty much. Let's take a look at the stats real quick. The two most important for a stamina build are health and the stamina recovery. So I recommend being around 19,000 health. That will prevent a lot of one shots. Very important. In stamina recovery unbuffed right now we have 1,500. 572 if you're buffing up with a potion we will go a little bit higher and if the two-handed passive is active it will actually go over 2000 i will talk about that later the stats here health and stamina recovery everything else the build will evolve around we will also like push our weapon crit higher the weapon damage will go up like crazy and stuff like that but i will talk about that in a second so we have the lover mundustone to increase physical penetration, it's always the best when you play solo. For a solo build that is in a group, it's a little bit different. But for a solo setup, the extra physical penetration is always good. Buff food. So that is very important. You want or you need to run lava food soup and salt trees with this setup. This one gives you 4936 stamina and 493 stamina recovery. That's how we get this so high. And also a few passives help to get the number up. You can use this one from level 1 till max level. It doesn't matter, it scales. And it's very cheap to buy in the guild stores. Like 100 costs like 5000 gold or something. It's very cheap. So make sure to go get that one. This one doesn't have health in the buff food. But you can see we are using, like I use 20 points in the health attribute. And I have two health and chance here. I'm an orc. And a few other passives that bump up my health. So if you don't have 19,000. You can always remove more points from the stamina attributes. And put them into health. But having like 19k is important. Now in terms of potion. Preferably you want to use the major or like the weapon crit potions. Opposed to the weapon power ones. So. Like, I usually keep using the weapon power potions because they're always in the store. They're quite expensive. These ones are also not super cheap, but still pretty nice and you can craft them as well. The ingredients are on the website. If you don't have the budget, you can always run the normal essence of stamina. That will have one downside. So, a Sorg has crit surge, which is really freaking strong. It gives you a major brutality, 20% weapon damage boost, and it also heals. So whereas most setups have to run weapon power potions to actually get the major brutality on or the major savagery buff, we don't need the brutality one because we already have it through a skill. So you could use the weapon crit potions, which give you only major savagery and then extra health and stamina boost. That would be your option. Or you use the essence of stamina ones, which just give you the stamina boost. But then you will lose major savagery. However, there is a trick in the fighter's guild. There is camo hunter. And when you read the second text, there was slotted, you gain major savagery. So that's another thing you actually could use then. Why are these two buffs, major brutality and major savagery, so important? As you see, 20% extra weapon damage, that's a lot. And then we also have Major Savagery, 10% weapon crit for just activating a button, that's a lot of extra damage. On top of that, you also get Major Endurance, 20% more stamina recovery and like 7582 stamina. So depending on what you run here, you have to adjust your skill setup. Because these two buffs are very important because they boost your damage like crazy. I made an article on the website talking about the importance of buff food and potions a while ago. It's in the 
solo build section. I will also link it in the description so you actually can go check it out. Where I also explain, okay, that's why. Because a lot of people don't run the right buff food and they don't run the right potions or no potions at all. And your character loses so much power, it's not good. On top of that, in the alchemy section, level this up. It takes like 20 minutes. I have a guide on the website as well in the crafting section for alchemy. Medicinal use. When using potions, resulting effects last 30% longer. So normally potions last around 33 seconds, but when you have the passive, they last 47 seconds and the potion cooldown is 45 seconds. So you can have 100% uptime on all these buffs. So I hope you realize how powerful that stuff is. It's crazy. All stamina based races work with this setup. However, I usually just pick Orc. Because it gives me 258 weapon damage, 2000 max stamina, then 1000 extra health. Pretty much the best stats you can get from a race. But the other races also work like a Red Guard, a Wood Elf, an Imperial, a Kashyyyk, the Dark Elf. They all work. As long as they're stamina based, they will be good. But Orc is just a little bit higher than all the others. But it's all fine. If you want, you could be a Werewolf. Totally up to you. I don't recommend being a vampire because you will have a cost increase, but werewolf, totally, go for it. I will showcase you the tier 1 setup. I have an advanced and a beginner setup on the website as well. Because I know Turbo Kun is quite hard to get, so like the tier 2 setup will include Bloodspawn instead. Or any other like damage monster set like Selene, Stormfist, they all work. Same for gear, if you don't have Zogwin, you can run Hunting's Rage and so on. But I want to talk about why I run this specific setup on all my, or on most of my solo stamina builds. Well, because it's the best, but I want to explain why these sets are so strong. So when we look at Zogwin, get two weapon crit and the pen physical penetration, that's already super strong. And the five piece, when you deal critical damage, you gain a stack of precision, increasing your weapon critical by... 129 for 10 seconds, up to 10 stacks. That, so, that's like 6%. At max stacks, you also gain minor force, increasing your critical damage done by 10%. In group builds, people often use the trap to get the minor force, but we have better things to do. For example, apply cult drops to get major fracture debuff. So, on. so Zogwin is a really nice alternative to get the minor force. 6% weapon crit is already strong and then the minor force on top on top of that is even better. They can't really do anything wrong. You can get this one in Frost Vault, normal mode. As long as you have the DLC, it should be easy to get. Briarheart. This is pretty much my favorite set. We get a weapon crit, a max stem, and a weapon crit bonus, and then the 5 piece. When you deal critical damage, you have a 25% chance to increase your weapon damage by 450 for 10 seconds. While this effect is active, your critical strikes heal you for 37, 378 health. But 450 weapon damage is a lot. Just to showcase you when I'm actually... Like, when I'm fully buffed. More or less. You see we have like 4500 weapon damage and 59% weapon crit and that on a two-hander setup. So these things really really help. And the weapon damage is not even the best part. The healing actually is. Because we have such a high weapon crit rating, the heal will constantly proc. We have endless hail, we have hurricane, we have cult drops. These are all damage over time effects that take every second. On top of that, we will also use a spammable. So every second we have like 4 or 5 abilities that actually can proc the heal. The heal doesn't have a cooldown. And believe it or not, it's pretty much like the strongest or second strongest heal on this setup because it will proc so much. Now keep in mind, it's only active for 10 seconds. And then there's 5 seconds, it's not active, and then it will proc again. That's the only downside to it, but yeah, this one, really strong. 
You can buy blue jewelry in the guild stores, very cheap. The two-handed weapon, I prefer a Nox because it applies a bleed, but a sword or a maul will also do. You can get, you don't need to get uh, the perfect trade if you buy like a weapon with a bad trade, it will not cost a lot. Like I bought blue jewelry and a weapon, a two-handed for like 12k. Because the reason why you can run blue, purple, gold, it's up to you, but the difference is so small. You gain maybe 200 extra stamina from blue to purple. It's such a small difference. Of course, it doesn't look as good as when it's shiny gold, but again, because we use Robust, the difference is not that big. That's this set on the back bar, we run the Maelstrom Bow. You can get this one in normal Maelstrom Arena. In Greymore, you can actually get the Maelstrom Bow in normal Maelstrom Arena. And if you want the perfect version, you gotta do Veteran. But it doesn't matter, because we run this on the back bar. The one piece bonus will not be active on the front bar, only the two piece bonus will be active on the front bar. So it doesn't matter whether you have the imperfect or the perfect one. And the reason why this one is so good is because it increases the damage of our endless hail. And even when we swap to the front bar, it will actually keep pumping up the numbers, damage numbers of our endless hail. On top of proccing the weapon damage enchant with the infused glyph. Basically 450 weapon damage for free all the time. Very nice. The last set is Turbo Coon. That might be a little bit unusual. But let me explain. Yes, you can run a damage monster set. It doesn't matter. The thing is, when I was testing these builds in veteran 4-man dungeons and soloing them, Turbo Coon performed the best. Because... When there's a lot of trash monsters attacking you, that's a lot of damage. And when there's a boss, they usually hit really hard because they're meant to be tanked. And as a solo build, we'd have to dodge roll one shots, so like block, shield up, and so on. And Torvokun really helps. Because when you take damage from a nearby enemy, you summon a growing pool of desecrated bile for 8 seconds. Enemies in the bile take 129 disease damage every 1 second and are afflicted with minor maim and minor defile for 4 seconds, reducing their damage done by 15% and healing received and health recovery by 15%. 16 second cooldown. So the minor maim is what we want with this set. 15% damage mitigation or reduction. So when you have 10 monsters and they all deal 15% less damage, that will add up. And the boss that does a lot of damage, like 20k per hit or stuff like that, 15% reduction is quite nice to have, because it doesn't sound like a lot, but it can really make a huge difference. If you don't think you need it, go for a damage set, no problem. Alternatively, you can also run Bloodspawn. I run full Divines to boost the Mundus Stone, then I have 5 Stamina and Chance, and 2 Health to bump up my Health number a little bit. I run 6 medium, 1 heavy. The reason that this, it's a good mix between cost reduction from medium passive and then when heavy armor we get 2% extra health. And from undaunted we get 4% overall max resources. I just found this to be the best mix and we also get a little bit higher resistances and so on. The jewelry, just run robust, you could run bloodthirsty, but really robust is fine with the weapon damage and chance. The two-handed weapon is an ox with a sharpened trait. Optimally, you want to run poisons because they will deal actually really good damage. If you don't have the budget, you can just run an absorb stamina enchantment. It will also do fine. And then on the back part, infused weapon damage enchantment. And that's important, like I mentioned before. So when this now procs, I have the weapon damage. Given I'm on the front bar. And it will reapply, did you see? Even though I'm not on the back bar anymore. So it's very important to keep this up all the time. It has so much good effects. It's basically 452 weapon damage for free. That's the setup. I don't think I forgot anything to mention. The reason why I run sharpened is again to bump up our penetration number. The higher the better. 
Champion points real quick. 40, 52, 53, 64, 61. I do have a 300, 5, 600 CP setup on the website as well. Tumbling, 61 points. Shadow Ward, 31. The reason why we have so much points here is dodge rolling is import important on a stamina build. Because what eventually could be a one shot can be zero damage when you dodge roll. Dodge rolling is so powerful in this game and the more you play it, the more used you will get to like mechanics or boss patterns. Because when a boss one-shots you, you're dead. But when he dodge roll, most of the times you will get zero damage. It's that easy to avoid damage. But you need to know the time when to dodge roll. And that will only come with experience. We have that and 43 tenacity, 56 moon calf, 23 bashing and 56 warlord. 32 quick recovery, 49, 49, 48. 31, 61. Pretty basic setup. You can play around. No problem. Now let's get to the interesting part of stamina sorks and their passives and skills. That's that's basically what makes them so good. The gear obviously also plays a huge part, but they just have a lot of juicy skills. Uh, first off, the passives. Daedric protection increases your health and stamina recovery by 20% while you have a Daedric summoning ability. Plotted. 20% just like this out of the out of nothing and we have bound armaments on the front bar That's why our values are higher than with other classes on the back bar We have the outro that we can use We also get 15% ultimate cost reduction, which is pretty nice Other than that, there's not really anything useful here and then in storm calling 5% extra physical damage, that is huge, and amplitude, this one is really good. Increases your damage done against enemies by 1% for every 10% current health they have. Essentially, when the enemy has 100% health, it will deal 10% more damage, just like this. Really nice. And then this one, which is a, a nice freebie, I guess. So yeah, there's not a lot of useful passives, but... When the passives are useful, they are quite OP. I want to talk about the two-hander skill uh, passives real quick. Battle Rush increases your stamina recovery by 30% for 10 seconds after killing a target. So when we are with the potion buffed up at 1773, we will go over 2000 once this here will proc. And it will proc very often. So you can see how you can bump up your stamina recovery recovery like crazy and this one i guess is not bad either when you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack your next direct damage attack used within seven seconds deals an additional 10 percent heavy attacks i will talk about that in a second these are also very important because they restore 3000 stamina every time you do a heavy attack this one will proc pretty often and we get the cost reduction and here like i mentioned before uh, the text in the middle, access grant your melee attacks a 16% chance to apply a bleed, dealing 12,000 physical damage. So the bleed is just a nice damage over time effect. This one here, when you deal light or heavy attack damage, you, it's actually like, it will spread to other enemies as well. On the bow, there is really only ranger that is really useful, so you get cost reduction on your endless hail. And hasty retreat, when you grant your mage expedition for 4 seconds after you use do roll dodge. So when you dodge on the bow bar, you will actually be a little bit faster. The two-hander bar, that's not the case. Medium armor passives, they're very strong. So here, extra weapon critical. Then we get extra stamina recovery and stamina cost reduction. This here is not that important. 15% more weapon damage. And also roll dodge cost reduction, 24%. Really strong. Because we run one heavy armor piece, I think Chuggernaut is nice to have. So if you if you have the skill points, go for it. Because 2% extra health doesn't sound like a lot. But again, 2% here, another 4% here is already 6%. And then it will just go up and up depending on what uh, enchant you run and so on. 
soul magic I want to talk about consuming trap I'm not running it because pretty, we have pretty much enough sustain anyway but this would be another option so this costs magicka but it actually deals physical damage it scales depending on your highest offensive stat so it deals a little bit damage but the nice thing is it, you, it will not use up your stamina and on top of that when you read the second half text, if an affected enemy dies, you fill an empty soul gem and heal for 4000. You also restore 2000 magicka and 6800 stamina. So often, if I use it, I place it on a low health target. It dies, I get 6800 stamina back. It's really nice. Fighter skilled. We run Dawnbreaker on the front bar. If you run the normal potions, you can run camo as well, because you get the weapon critical 10% from it. Slayer gives you a little bit extra weapon damage. Banish the wicked. 9 ultimate when you kill an undead, dead or a werewolf, which is really nice. And then skill tracker, when you actually use this, your fighter skill abilities deal an additional 20% damage. When you like hit undead, dead or a werewolf. So this can be really nice. And this one as well, because it reduces the cost. I talked about the Undaunted one as well, so 2% per type of armor. We have 6 medium, 1 heavy, so that's 2 types, that's why we get 4%. Echoing Vigor. I made a video about this recently because a lot of people ask me, Alkas, why are you not using Resolving Vigor? It's supposed to be the solo heal. Why are you using the group heal on a solo build? So I think it's not really correct. Because this one can also be used on a solo build, especially on the solo PV builds. This one is better. Because this one heals for more than enough. And the other one, the Resolving Vigor, overheals like 3-4 times. And you don't need that much healing. Especially not on a sword. The Resolving Vigor only lasts 4 seconds, whereas Echoing Vigor lasts 10 seconds. So when I run this heal which is more than enough. I activate this and I can deal damage, reapply my dots and so on, and then after 10 seconds I heal again. If I run the other morph, which is only 4 seconds, I activate it, I deal damage and I have to heal again. I deal damage and I have to go activate the heal again. So would you rather be spamming your heal and not dealing damage or activating your heal, your heal once every 10 seconds if you really need it and then actually deal damage? So yeah, 10 second morph is way better for this setup. It, it's not always the case. Now for this specific setup, Echoing Vigor will be more than enough because we have other sources of healing like Briarheart, like Crit Surge, like Dark Deal. That's why Sork is so good, it has just so much good stuff. I already mentioned that you need the racial passives and alchemy medicinally used to get the longer potions. Let's take a look at the skills and why I run this specific setup. Brawler, this is a very important ability because you see when I just when I hit air, it gives me a 4500 shield. When I hit one target, I get like a 7000 shield pretty much. That's really nice. If you have like 3 4 targets, every time you use this, you will get like a 20k shield. Before I swap to the back bar, I always activate this ability just to get a free shield. This one deals damage and it gives you a big boy shield. This is like the number one survival ability for solo setups. It's just the shield you get is so powerful. And when you drop low on health, you can just spam this. Till crit surge will heal you back up. Reverse slice is your execute which also deals splash damage, so when I use this on an egg, on a enemy, you see it actually will deal AoE damage when there's enemies around. Dizzing Swing, this is your spammable, so it has a small cast time, but it deals a lot of damage, and it also sets the enemy off balance. I mentioned before that heavy attacks restore resources, so when you do a heavy attack, you get 3000 stamina back. When you do a heavy attack on an off-balanced enemy, you get like 6,000 stamina back, so twice the amount. Not a lot of people know that, because the game doesn't tell you, but yes. Then Bound Armaments. 
this is a nice so first off it gives us like when you read the last text while slotted your max stamina is increased by eight percent and your light attack deal ten percent more damage just like this on top of that every time i do a light attack we get these daggers when we have four we can shoot them to the enemy so whenever you get this ready you want to shoot it because it will deal a little bit more damage than dizzing swing Echoing Vigor, we talked about this before. It's a very powerful heal. It needs to be on here. Flawless Dawnbreaker. So this is a AoE cone damage. Direct damage and it also deals damage over time effect. On top of giving you 300 weapon damage for 20 seconds. Very strong. Backbar Ultimate, the Storm Atronach. I like to use this on single target because it deals the, like, the highest damage. So essentially this one for single target and this one for AoE. And we have Dark Deal. This is another powerful Sork ability. It costs Magicka, so basically we, we transform Magicka into health and stamina. Bargain with Darkness to restore 8000 health and 3600 stamina instantly and an, and an additional 2400 stamina over 20 seconds. That's just really good. I, uh, it's really strong. So make sure to use this one. If you drop low on stamina, you can always just spam this and you will be good to go. And even if the enemies damage you, it doesn't matter because you also heal on top of that. Crit Surge. This is your number one priority ability to keep up. If you let this drop, you're going to die. If you have issues with bar swapping, I recommend placing this on the front bar, for example, instead of bound armaments. It will give you Major Brutality 20% more weapon damage for 33 seconds and it will also heal. While active, dealing critical damage heals you for 3300 health. It has a 1 second cooldown. Because we have such a high crit rating and abilities that can proc, it will always proc on cooldown. So essentially, when I have 2 damage over time effects or 3 active and I drop low on health, I can just spam Brawler and watch my health go back up. This is very powerful. Then we have Razor Cult Drops. We don't use this because of damage, but because it gives us Major Fracture. Enemies who take damage from the Cult Drops from the cult drops have Major Fracture applied to them, reducing their physical resistance by 5280 for 4 seconds. The duration itself, the Cult Drops only last 10 seconds, but on second 10, the debuff for Major Fracture will reapply. So Major Fracture will last a total of 14 seconds. Similar to Hurricane, which is 15, and Endless Hail, which is 14 seconds. So I usually reapply these at the same time, because they have a similar duration. Hurricane deals a lot of damage. It makes you a little bit faster and it gives you Major Resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5280. So, like... You see, the Sork abilities, they're so powerful. Hurricane, Crit Surge, Dark Deal, you get Bound Armaments, it's just really juicy. And Endless Hail, like I mentioned before, very powerful single target and AoE ability. Keeps our back bar weapon enchantment proccing and will also still have the effect on the front bar from the Maelstrom Bow. You can experiment around with other abilities if you want to. But this setup is pretty hard to beat, to be honest. Before we check out the outfit, I want to talk about the most important parts of the build again. Dodge rolling, blocking, healing and shielding. That's always your priority one. A boss that one-shots you can do zero damage if you just dodge roll the attack. The more you play, the more experience you will get and you will learn mechanics and pattern of bosses. So for me, it's probably pretty obvious when I have to do a dodge roll. For you, it might not be that obvious because you might not have fought the enemy, or like that particular boss. The more you will play, the better you will get. Blocking reduces damage a lot as well and you can always shield up with Brawler because you can block while activating the ability. Before I go to my back bar, I often use Brawler just to get a small shield on me. So I have like 
more time to reapply abilities on the back bar. Keep up your healing. Especially critical surge. And echoing vigor is your second priority. Then for sustain we have dark deal which helps us a lot and heavy attacks. And remember if the enemy is set off balance we get twice the amount of resources back. I can maybe showcase this real quick just so you see when I do heavy attacks I will actually get resources back. So now I do heavy attacks you see it go faster up than normal. So yeah heavy attacks are very important and when you actually watch like uh, a dungeon run of me I often do heavy attacks because of that reason. I don't do heavy attacks for fun. I do it because they restore a lot of resources. There's something else I might want to mention. Yes. Okay, the healing. I talked about that. The damage mitigation through Hurricane. Just overall setup. It's just like everything synergizes really well. The sets, the skills, the passives of Stem Sorg. That thing is just a powerhouse. The outfit. Sifkin Helm, then we have Scale Caller Arm, Cops, the Scale Caller Bracers, the Guards, then we have Ebon Shadow Battlelocks, Scale Caller Curras, Belt, and the Boots. The colors are Anaquina Sunrise and Cold Harbor Ash Black, on all of that stuff. Yep. If you have questions, you can always join our community Discord, link in the description as well, or ask me on twitch.tv slash alcasthq when I live stream I usually try to answer as much as possible sometimes when I'm busy I don't have time but if I'm not busy I try to answer as much questions as possible if you want to watch a few other videos you can do that right here otherwise thanks for watching hit that juicy subscribe button and like button and see you soon cheers